good to go live. What's up, wrestling fans? It's two What's bros, up? one bro, two bros, two bros here tonight, fully powered and ready to rock and roll. What's happening, Kevin? Last time we, well, last week Doug wasn't with <laughs> Did you us. Just freeze up. The wind blew him out of a tree, as I mentioned to everyone last week. The week before that, last time anyone saw Doug. He was frozen for like 20 minutes and then disappeared on us. So, Doug, stick with us tonight, my friend. We're talking uh, WrestleMania No promises. Back There's still questionable internet in the house right now. So, well, well, Wait, we, what happened? We, I was going to say, I hope that – are you are you coming in and out on me? Oh, no. Is he, fro is he frozen? <laughs> I'm frozen. I'm moving again. Now you're frozen. What is happening? This is ridiculous. Now you're – okay. I think it might be on your end, Doug, because here everything looks fine. You and me. It, it, it is on my end. That, that Ever <laughs> since we've been getting ready for this move, the internet in the house has been wacky. I've had to take down half the mesh. I'm actually in a different place tonight, but uh, apparently it's just as poor service in this area of the house. So anyway, let's get to it before I freeze up. <laughs> before Doug freezes up, we're talking WrestleMania Backlash. Thank you for joining us. It was an eventful night. Uh, it is a notable pay-per-view. Not only, Doug, is it the first pay-per-view after, after, uh, after WrestleMania, it's Edin, Edin Burke's first pay-per-view. It's Pat McAfee's first pay-per-view on their respective announced desk. Um, it's the first pay-per-view back at the Thunderdome after having a live crowd. Uh, and it's the first time uh, that uh, Drax the Destroyer has ever summoned zombies. So there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was garbage, man. That was straight up garbage. Army of the Dead looks awesome from a from a just like pure like uh, action movie, zombies kind of movie. But man, that was garbage. But I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't watch the show, you may be thinking, wait a minute. Did I just hear Kevin say Drax the Destroyer sum summon zombies? We're going to get into that. Uh, as we always do, though, Doug, let's just talk a little bit in general about the pay-per-view. We're going to get into winners and losers and, and match results and what we thought of everything. But in general, uh, this was a dichotomy of a show. What was good was really, really good. And what we hinted at as bad was as probably bad as it gets. But for me, uh, I think that the good far outweighed the bad. And, uh, you know, if you minus that one thing, everything is either uh, good to great in my mind. So uh, definitely thumbs up for me. Actually, you know, I um, I came late to the pay-per-view because I had a little fight with Peacock earlier tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I also thought, it, you know, because I traditionally miss the pre-show anyway. So I just kind of extended that a little bit longer tonight. So I came in right at the, uh, the, the Miz match and missed a couple of uh, – of things I believe that probably were very well, but my, my first taste of backlash was the complete crap that was that zombie match. And even <laughs> if AEW would have done that, David Poole, I would be saying it was crap. <laughs> that was uh, complete crap. <laughs> what do you say, Doug Lind? Let's uh, let's uh, start from the beginning. Let's do it. All right, pre-show match that you missed. Just quickly say, Sheamus uh, had the only match. It was not announced uh, ahead of time, so it wasn't anything that we previewed. But he had an open challenge, and uh, he won that open challenge against Ricochet. Uh, I like what Sheamus has done with the open challenge, taking the face concept of uh, giving someone a title shot and putting the heel twist on it of, I have an open challenge, but it's not going to be for the title because you have to earn that by beating me first. Uh, right. That part I like. The match was solid. Ricochet is who answered that challenge. But who's seen Ricochet, right? I mean, like, he's been person non grata for so long. It's not like it was uh, any question as to how that one was going to go. Uh, I did like the little nice touch, though, Ricochet wrestling in, in pants. Uh, it gives that, uh, you know, that just little bit of detail of, huh, he wasn't expecting this. He did it at the last minute. I always like, you know, it kind of one of those small things about wrestling That's that kind of irritates me. Yeah. When you have like, you know, a guy who surprises you by coming out, but he's already dressed to wrestle. The pyro's already queued up. Like everything's good to go. Um, good match, what you would expect between these two, but nothing to go out of your way to see if you didn't see. On the other hand, the main show, Doug, you missed the first match. You missed a great match. 
uh, as you would expect, considering who was in it. Um, but the opening contest of the main uh, pay-per-view itself was uh, Rhea Ripley defending her Raw Women's Championship successfully against okay. Asuka and Charlotte. Sorry, Doug. Spoiler. <laughs> all right. That's all right. And you did another real one. Who 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 did she go over on? Was it Asuka? I'm sure it was Asuka because, you know, flair is flair. So, exactly, okay, it was exactly Asuka. the way it went. The, the okay. format uh, meant there were no slow moments. You had, you know, there was nonstop action in a triple threat. Uh, there was a nice double superplex uh, spot that uh, the the other two ladies did against Charlotte. Uh, I liked Charlotte's arrogance because at one point that there was a, a point where she covered both of them at the same time, kind of pulling a Roman Reigns from WrestleMania. It didn't work for her, but I liked the cockiness of thinking that it would. Uh, oh, this yeah. one went as I predicted. I know I was doing the show alone last week. Uh, so, Doug, uh, these were considered uh, like uh, if the opponent doesn't show up, uh, they default. So I am 1-0 and and you are now 0-1 because you missed this one. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, uh, Doug, uh, where do you think this goes? Uh, do you think this goes Flair Ripley okay, next? Because obviously this protected uh, Flair uh, for not having. Yeah, of course, of course it'll go Flair Ripley. I mean, you know, they protect Flair with this. You know, Barry, well, not Barry Oscar, but Oscar takes the pin. So Oscar's out of this. And now it moves on to uh, on the blonde on blonde action. So we'll see where this goes. Do you think that they could stretch this out to SummerSlam? Obviously, it's a big match, but I, I just think in general, uh, the heels are not the ones doing the chasing. And, in in, you know, when you talk two more pay-per-views between now and SummerSlam, I don't know that they can make it go that long. I, you know, I'm not sure who the heels are, if Re if Ripley's a heel or if she's a face or Flair's a heel or or even, you know, and then there's just Oscar. So I'm not really sure. You know, I think, it, I think you know, let's find out what happens tomorrow night on Raw and see who, who shakes out as an actual heel versus who's the actual face. Do we keep, you know, cocky Charlotte as the heel or is Rhea Ripley? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm confused about that myself. <laughs> Sometimes WWE seems a little confused on how they position heels and faces. So there is some inconsistency. Absolutely. Uh, next up, Doug, the SmackDown Tag Team Championships were defended. Uh, the Dirty Dogs lost in their uh, uh, attempt to conquer the Mysterios. Their plan backfired. There was a pre-show attack against Dominic, okay. and that meant that much of the, the match was a two-on-one uh, beatdown. Um, the angle you know, was that, you know, Ray was doing his best to take them on by himself. And then when Dominic, of course, as you would imagine, even though you didn't see it, you've watched wrestling. So, you know, Dominic's coming out, right? So Dominic limps his way out to the ring and stands in the corner, but his dad being a dad refuses to tag him because son, you're hurt. You can't do this. Even though he just taken a, a, a huge beating for a majority of the match. Um, but Dominic does tag in and shows great fire. Of course, they instantly get the advantage on him since they attacked him earlier in the night. Uh, but the uh, the Mysterios do end up prevailing. There was a really great spot I liked where uh, one of the a dirty dog, well, I will, Rude was the one who threw uh, Mysterio out of the ring. Of course, uh, Ray doing that famous like baseball slide thing he does. But as he's sliding out of the ring, uh, Ziggler connects to the chin with a super kick at the same time. It just looked fantastic. Um, I will say that the first half of this match was a little methodical. Uh, I think that while the beatdown angle uh, worked well for telling a great story, it didn't necessarily make for the great match because when the heels just dominate on a guy after a while, it starts to get a little bit repetitive. And then that happened again once Dominic got into the match because he also had been hurt. But it did tell a great story of showing the Mysterios being both underdogs. Uh, Dominic's definitely going to take that role and that mantle eventually from his father as the guy that uh, manages to show great fire and fighting spirit and come out on top. But, Doug, we have new tag team champions, the first father and son tag team champions in WWE history. That's pretty cool. Eddie Guerrero must be proud of his son, Dominic. <laughs> And I'm glad you said that, Doug, because <laughs> Dominic did win with his his uh, his father's frog splash, which was a no, great. He did, he did. He absolutely did. And okay, that's awesome. 
<laughs> as I said, the story the story made the match almost inconsequential as to how they got there because the way they got there was fantastic. I predicted this one uh, correctly too because I just I no no if get no offense against Dolph or um, at all against Dolph or Rude, two talented guys, but you know they're they're definitely just placeholders until something else comes along. Uh, and I think that where we go from here, I mean, where we go from here has a lot of possibilities with uh, uh, tag team champions as the father and son duo, eventually maybe a uh, father son versus twin brother uh, matchup. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's happening anytime soon. I don't think What's you know, that, uh, <laughs> that, that faction I talked about is, isn't necessarily forming yet. That's still a duo, but again, I'm getting ahead of, ahead of myself again. <laughs> Well, now, Doug, you won't be ahead of yourself because you'll be at the moment in time when you tuned in, which was unfortunate for you because we've got the No Zombies Bard match between Damian Priest and The Miz. And <laughs> it, it, you may not have noticed, Doug, and the folks at home may not have noticed either, but uh, this match actually was won by Damian Priest, but... If you missed that somehow because you were busy hiding your face from the nonsense, uh, we wouldn't blame you. Man, this was this was terrible. It, it was, was just terrible. terrible. Priest deserves more. You know, oh. it, it, he deserves better. And I'm pretty sure that that both you know, Morrison and Miz were consumed by zombies. So, you know, farewell to them, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's so hard to transition from this into like a serious presentation of wrestling once you've done something like this. And I get corporate tie-ins. If they wanted to do this as a backstage segment, we could groan and move on, do it as a commercial, and we could play it off as, okay, there's a goofy WWE commercial, okay, whatever. But to present it as a, an entire match, to make the lumberjacks in this, lumber zombies, as it were, um, really makes it hard for the folks either before or afterwards to present a, a serious uh, professional wrestling contest as meaningful when you had this nonsense just preceding it. Let me just say kudos to Big Day for giving this one the hard pass and just tweeting that he was sending some friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, another good thing was this was in front of the Thunderdome. Can you imagine how a live audience would have crapped all over this? I oh, think the wow. was bad at WrestleMania because of the uh, Fiend nonsense. Uh, that would have been nothing compared to what this match would have. This, this was terrible. Yeah, it, it was around this point. My wife comes into the room and she's like, aren't you and Kevin supposed to be doing that wrestling thingy tonight? And why, why are you watching wrestling now? I'm like, because there's this crap on my, I can't watch it on a TV. I've been fighting for it for half an hour anyway, trying to get logged in. I'm logged in and this is what I, this is what I log into. This, this pay-per-view is going to be crap. Yeah. Fortunately. Not the case. Not the case. Not but the case. and the highs and lows and ebb and flows of a pay-per-view, I have to recommend the pay-per-view as a whole, as I said at the beginning. But, man, if you're going to skip anything in, in wrestling this year, skip this crap. It was it was terrible. I don't know if I've said that enough yet, but it was terrible. <laughs> hey, Scott My. Johnson, it was terrible. It was, Scott, it, was dude, it was terrible, man. <laughs> it was terrible. Watch. No, just skip this match if Peacock will let you do that once you finally get logged in. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on to much, much better things. And uh, that was SmackDown Women's Champion Bianca yes. Belair defending against Bayley. Doug, I am surprised by the, the placement of this match on the card, to be honest with you, because you had one of the signature um, champions coming out of WrestleMania, a star-making performance for Bianca Belair, defending her belt against the person who held that title the longer than right. anyone in history. And it was right in the middle of the card, which I'm like, huh, that's kind of odd. I, um, thought, I thought so, too, because, you know, they put both men's title matches basically back-to-back -back there. Well, really back-to-back, -back, yeah. not basically. I mean, they were back-to-back. -back. But, yeah, I... I I don't know. I don't know why this one was there, but yeah, yeah I mean, this was gr a great match to, to pull people out of that crap. Did I mention it was crap <laughs> that we got right before this? And kudos to these ladies managing to follow up that nonsense with a world title match that they presented as a professional wrestling match and doing a good yes. job at it. Absolutely. It, it, again, had it not been for Thunderdome, 
they would have had a hard time winning a crowd back because the crowd would have checked out. So they did have that advantage. They, they may have had the disadvantage of following it, but at least they didn't have to redeem it in front of a live crowd. This is so, so true because that would have been so hard to bring the, bring a live crowd back up after that absolute zombie crowd. <laughs> and again, <laughs> you know, Army of the Dead looks pretty freaking cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what else looks pretty freaking cool, and that's Bianca Belair. Yes. If you want to talk about uh, being given the, the corporate uh, seal of approval, beat Sasha Banks at WrestleMania in the main event, and then follow up by beating Bailey. It's a perfect follow-up match for Bianca Belair to solidify that, hey, I'm a big deal. And naturally, uh, both women are so talented, they lived up to what you would expect uh, their match to be. And therefore, I think it makes it a very signature win for Bianca Belair at this point in her career. I agree. And Bailey do, did everything in her power to, you know, just like Banks did to put over Belair, you know, and I love Bailey's fit at the end. <laughs> so fitting to oh, the yeah. character. But yeah, I mean, I thought this was a really great match and this was my, Oh, thank God moment. It's not going to be all, all <laughs> zombie crap. <laughs> I will say it's unfortunate that there was a bit of a braid botch <laughs> at the end. It was a good looking spot where uh, Bianca was going to win the match by using her braid to hook the leg and unfortunately lost traction with the braid. So that didn't look fantastic, but didn't take away really from what they've done before. So I'm, I'm very much uh, positive and into this. And just to clarify, I really dig zombies, but not wrestling zombies. <laughs> Unless it's the Undertaker. That's the only undead zombie, the the only undead wrestler I want to see. And, you know, he's retired and he needs to stay that way. Love the Taker, but, you know, that's good. Zombies need to be out of wrestling. (laughs) I I will say, uh, Doug, and and to David, too, that uh, um, I made a note and I forgot to mention it earlier. And I hate that we're talking about the only really bad match, but it did silver lining. It did allow Corey Graves to do a, a pretty hilarious, uh, uh, you know, insider slam by saying, I didn't know we were restarting up WWE's version of ECW, which <laughs> is fantastic because the very first match of WWE's ECW revival uh, in- included a vampire. And so and then they you know, also ended up with wrestling zombies because they were literally trying to mix sci fi with wrestling, which, you know, does sound like a Doug wet dream, but not in this instance. He actually likes these two things separate from one another. I do, although I don't. I don't mind a vampire Cesaro now that we're mentioning that. But we'll get to that in a minute too. <laughs> we'll be getting to it uh, shortly because another thing I liked about this card uh, is that they kept everything um, really tight. It was a, a standard three-hour pay-per-view, but there mm-hmm. wasn't a ton of matches, so everything uh, felt like a pretty big deal. Uh, which you know. I was alone last week, Doug, so I didn't get to ask you. Or what do you think about them actually using the WrestleMania branding with WrestleMania Backlash? Uh, first okay, time you I heard that time, up on me, but I think you're gonna, you froze up on me on mine. But I think we're going to ask about the WrestleMania Backlash, which I think that's as stupid as the zombies. <laughs> if that's what we're just asking, I think that is stupid too. Okay, that's, it's like yeah. WrestleMania Backlash, you know. So. <laughs> Uh, that's exactly the way I presented it last week to my thoughts. Exactly that, uh, that, that WrestleMania branding needs to be protected and by stretching it over into the name of another pay-per-view uh, you're watering it down. So I will give them credit though, that for, you know, a, a pay-per-view that is centered around uh, the fallout from WrestleMania, there was a lot of WrestleMania uh, implications to this pay-per-view that didn't necessarily rehash things. Hence too, leading into our next contest. Uh, We had Bobby Lashley successfully defending the WWE Championship against Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. Like the first match, you got a triple threat here where nothing was allowed to get slow because there was action going with uh, two of the three at all given times. And just also like the first matchup, uh, it was a breath of fresh air and that they managed to add to that third element that basically presented a WrestleMania rematch without it feeling like a rehash uh, by giving you a little something new with a twist to it. Oh, and also like, I guess the opening match, it protected the actual feud that they're going after because it wasn't Drew that took the pinfall on this one. Like he did at WrestleMania. It was Braun Strowman. 
Mm -hmm. And you and you had uh, Bobby stealing uh, stealing the actual pin at, at the last moment. But yeah, let's talk about what I think was probably the coolest spot I saw all night, where we had a claymore. It, uh, when Strowman actually catches a claymore and and and, and slams <laughs> poor Drew through the table, it's a power bomb through a table. That just looked amazing. I mean, you had you had these three beefy guys just beating the crap out of each other for, you know, the entire match. It, yeah, and it, it, it was a really good match for three Whoa. really big guys because these are three really athletic big guys, even Strowman, man. All yeah. these guys look great. <laughs> you say even Strowman. I got to give uh, a, a little sneaky uh, MVP uh, award here to, uh, to Braun Strowman because, honestly, as soon as Lashley got thrown through the LED screen, which looked cool, mm -hmm. uh, I thought, okay, that's where they eliminate him from the match. And now you got Drew and Braun working the bulk of the match by themselves. And they carried it. And I was surprised because I guess you know, as much as I was into the Drew-Bobby storyline all the way up to WrestleMania, the Braun element being added in, I wasn't necessarily crazy about. didn't know if he could carry his in. And like you said, the most impressive spot of the whole match was this mm -hmm. amazing feat of strength by him. Although I will say mm -hmm. second place probably goes to Drew McIntyre managing to uh, to get a Mikinosho, uh, Mikinosho yes. driver. Yes, oh. that, was, that was very cool too. Yeah, but you're right. Excellent match all the way around. All three men did a great job. And – they managed to protect Drew in a way that they didn't protect him at WrestleMania where he took a clean pinfall. Mm -hmm. And so maybe with a little bit of distance, maybe this now means that, uh, that maybe Drew is not out of that title picture just yet, because I thought if he took another clean loss uh, in any way, it's two in a row for the baby face to lose to the heel. That pretty much means your feuds over and, yep. and Bobby's moving on to another opponent. But I think they get at least one more Drew match out of this. Yeah, I think so too. I, 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 but overall, man, this was a great match. I mean, after that zombie crap, you know, me and you putting on a match after that, you know, could have revived them. <laughs> what? Hey, folks watching, Doug did not like the zombie crap. <laughs> I thought the two triple threats would probably, I like the, I, the first triple threat was so good. The, the women's triple threat that started the pay-per-view. I thought this is the match of the night right out the get go. And then comes the men's triple threat. And I'm like, okay, we had two really strong triple threat matches. That, that's probably going to be the high water mark. And then comes this main event, Doug. Man, let me tell you, Roman Reigns has been the, consistently the best thing on WWE a year ago. If you would have said, okay, in a year, you're going to be singing the praises of Roman <laughs> on the <this> show. <laughs> It would have been insane to even think that, but Reigns has been consistently the best thing, and now you put him in a title match with Cesaro. Well, yeah. <laughs> Cesaro uh, has had the – I told this to my wife who, who came in, who's a big Cesaro fan and came in during the main event and, and sat down and watched it with me and was really marking out just like I was for every near fall because Cesaro has, without a doubt, had the best – uh, month of his professional life. First, he goes into WrestleMania, and we couldn't believe, we, you and I had talked about it in our preview of WrestleMania, we couldn't believe he was actually getting a one-on-one -on -one contest in a featured match with a, a main eventer like Seth Rollins. And we fully expected that that was his prize to get this contest, and he surprised us by actually winning. And I thought, well, that's great. Now what are they going to do with him? Right. So he got his WrestleMania moment. That's probably it. And then they've continued to feature him and actually put him in a world title match with Roman Reigns. Yes. <laughs> My first thought with that, Doug, if this would have opened the show, it wouldn't have surprised me. Again, consolation prize, Cesaro, you get your match. You get your world title match on pay-per-view. I didn't think they closed right. the show with it. And they did. And Cesaro, even though it ended up as we would have predicted it, uh, Roman mm -hmm. Reigns going over, um, Cesaro put on a contest that showed why he deserves to be a main event wrestler and performer in WWE. Absolutely was uh, an amazing performance by both men. Absolutely. So I, I was thinking about this after the match and before we logged on. I wanted to toss this to you. With Reigns keeping Jay in the back and saying, you go, you go find Jimmy or, you know, do whatever, you know, he's got this on his own and keeping, keeping 
the family out of this one. The right hand man was nowhere around to come in and save him at the last minute. And, you know, Reigns eventually does defeat Cesaro by himself. Whereas up to this point, I'm thinking pretty much every opponent has had some family interference. Does that set Cesaro down a level? Since, yeah, I mean, again, watch the match, a great match. But from a storytelling perspective, which it was a great story too, because they the early on with the shoulder, uh, the, the shoulder injury and working it and everything, I thought that was just beautiful. It was great, you know, from start to finish. But without any family interference, does that lessen Cesaro's, you know, efforts here? Because he was pinned by the tribal chief without any interference from anybody else. Well, I, I think that it doesn't. And because he wasn't pinned, he passed out. True, true. You're, it's you're, the, you're it's right. the Stone Cold tough SOB. I'm going to bleed here at WrestleMania and Bret Hart. I'm not going to tap out to him, but the body just gave out, but the spirit didn't. Um, I think Fair the story enough. they told, like you said, was a beautiful story, uh, mm-hmm. both with Roman working the arm, Cesaro selling the arm. And I don't know how much of a sell he had to do because there was legitimate blood. Coming from how did he hurt himself and, and bleed from like those awkward places on his arm? But yeah. <laughs> all the way around, you you were talking about the, you know, how good Roman is right now, the little things. And this is what I was, some, I was pointing out as I was, you know, watching with my wife is that just watch his facial expressions. Like there were times when, when when Cesaro would do something uh, to Roman, and rather than look hurt, at first he would look surprised and then annoyed. Like, yes, you know, yes. You know, like it, you're it, swatting it, the gnat that just will not get out of your face. And that is just beautiful heel work and so subtle, uh, but so important to that character. And I'm thinking, you got the master uh, of expressionism there at, at, at ringside for you. And I know a lot of this has to be uh, the advantage that Roman Reigns has had this past year of working with the incredible Paul E. Uh, Heyman there. Uh, and and I, I credit Paul a lot for those little subtle, uh, those little subtle expressions that, that Roman's so good with right now. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was just great. And I love the, the, the vampire mouthpiece. I got to go back to that since we're, it's an undead kind of night here. <laughs> On the two bro show where I ran about the undead. <laughs> Zombies bad. Vampire Cesaro, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was telling my wife again as she watched this with me that she saw the mouthpiece and she's like, he's not trying to be a vampire. It's like, no, no. It's just, it's cool. He's wearing a vampire, uh, you know, mouth guard. As opposed to what you missed earlier in the night where people were really trying to pretend they were zombies. Whole different thing. And Dave Poole, I think that you you hit something really, uh, you know, you're, you, I think David's right there. I think that it's going to further Jimmy's narrative that Roman uh, doesn't need Jay, but Jimmy does. I think that that's where the, that's, you know, that, that's one direction that that's probably going to go. That That's um, an interesting take. I, I like that take because, you know, I've, I, I've been wondering where this is going to go. And I like, I, you know, th- this, uh, this storytelling that's going on throughout this, the conflicted Jimmy where he wants to go back and help the family, but he knows things aren't quite right. I mean, all of this is just, it, it's just great. It's, it is consistently the best thing WWE is doing right now. Man, if this were on AEW, I would really, really love it. <laughs> Well, before we before we even just say that, you know, it, how amazing that Roman did in this, I want to go back again to Cesaro's part in this. The feats of strength that he showed in this, yes. I mean, the pop-up uh, uppercut always looks amazing, but mm. does it look more impressive than ever when you do it against a man the size of Roman Reigns? Uh, I love the move where Cesaro always brings, you know, the strength move where he uses the suplex from the outside to the inside while he's on the bottom rope where he has to do all the lifting. Always looks great. He tried it a time or two. It was thwarted. I thought, okay, they're just doing the hope spot. And then he gets it again. When you're doing it against a man the size of Roman Reigns, even more impressive. Uh, I, I love the the corkscrew plancha that he did uh, mm-hmm. over the top. I mean, yes, that looked beautiful. Yeah. The, yeah, best, that, the best month of Cesaro's professional life and uh, the good near falls at the end, that, that Superman punch I thought was it when he did mm-hmm. the, uh, the the rebound uh, uppercut Cesaro did, but it was countered instead and to that uh, Superman punch. I thought that was the end and it wasn't. Um, they had a very MMA ending to this match, Doug, and not just the passing out. I mean, the whole end of the match. Um, uh-huh. And again, 
credit where it's due. I'm, I'm giving a lot of credit to Cesaro because of how great a uh, strength uh, contest he put on. Uh, but Roman Reigns, I think this is the most mat wrestling I ever saw from Roman Reigns. And he held up his end of it. It wasn't just Cesaro making him look good. Uh, Roman was doing some things we hadn't seen, matching his style to his opponent. And that's that's really always a barometer of a wrestler taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. You think of a Bret Hart who could wrestle a match with uh, Shawn Michaels and then the next night have a, a five-star match with a Yokozuna. I mean, when you can tailor your your match to your opponent. Yes. It used to be that we would think that the opponent was carrying Roman to a good match. And now uh, Roman's holding his own and matching his style to his opponent's style. That's next level stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I think, you know, I, I own just like, you know, with my Pat McAfee comments before I saw him wrestle, I, I own that, you know, blaming a lot of, uh, my not liking Roman was being force fed a baby face for Roman Reigns when all in all, all we ever needed to do was just let him go out there, pair him with Paul Heyman and, and let him be a bad guy. <laughs> and when he does finally turn face, he's, it's going to be a very different Roman Reigns that we get when he is finally face again. You know, uh, I don't want to, I don't want that to be clear. Just like, I don't like zombies in wrestling. I don't want to see Roman <laughs> Turn face for quite a while. <laughs> Before we get to the end end of the match, the after match angle, uh, oh, yeah. I want I want to ask you this: um, Where does Roman go from here? Obviously, he's the champ. He had a decisive WrestleMania victory where I thought there was an opportunity to take the belt off of him without him losing, putting him back on the chase uh, for the world title. But he's winning and winning clearly. Who's the next, who's the logical opponent? When you say eventually when he turns face and all this, hopefully down the line, at some point somebody's going to get a lot of shine from knocking off Roman Reigns. But I don't see who that logical challenger is currently in WWE. You're either going to have to bring somebody in or make somebody a big deal who currently isn't considered a big deal. I, I agree. You're, and, and if you're going to bring somebody, if you're going to make somebody a big deal, you are going to have to do it over months and maybe build up to WrestleMania next year to do that. You know, because, you know, somebody coming out of out of nowhere from right, right now is not going to happen unless you bring back Lesnar at SummerSlam for something like that. And I'm not sure. I don't want to see a part time. I, I don't want I don't want to see a part time champion again. But I don't know. Maybe that's what flips him to a face. But again, that's all too soon. You know, we're talking about you know just a few months out from SummerSlam. What are we talking? August probably for that. But I really don't know. I thought they were going to kind of tease. Well, and they did kind of tease it at the at the end of the match when we have you know Jay beating down, uh, be, beating down Cesaro. Then Rollins music hits, and Rollins comes out in the most awesome suit I have ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. <laughs> I told Kevin before we went live, he looks like an anime villain time and time again. And this suit just took it over the edge. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I think that eventually Seth is a, a opponent for Roman for sure. Uh, eventually. Uh, mm -hmm. I, David Poole, I agree with you. Oh, I think he yeah. is eventually uh, a main event level opponent for Roman Reigns. I don't, at least right now, see Big E uh, or Seth, even if we're talking several months from now, beating Roman Reigns, I think more likely would be a, a, a Brock Lesnar, you know, beast versus beast contest. Uh, maybe even if you bring in Lesnar as soon as SummerSlam and have a big marquee match. I don't know that Lesnar would go over in that one. Maybe it's just helping to build Roman's legacy. But then again, if you keep building him up and up and up and up, there's got to be somebody that's going to unseat him. And who is that logical person going to be? I just don't see that person just yet. But yeah, I don't, as you I don't mentioned, either. Seth coming in at the, I, I fully expected this match was going to end with some Uso uh, yes. shenanigans where we're going to have a further furthering of that storyline. Then that, that's not the way they went. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, we had uh, 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 Jay come back out and do a, a brief beatdown of Cesaro, but that wasn't where they were going. Uh, the ending of the uh, pay-per-view had nothing to do with furthering the Usos, Roman Reigns, Tribal Chief storyline. It was reigniting a WrestleMania feud, Doug. Yeah, you know, I really expected, you know, Jimmy to come out when Jay was beating down because, you know, there was a bit of hesitance when Jay's getting ready to do his, the splash off the rope. Like, OK, I'm waiting for the music to hit. I'm waiting for the next person to come out. And then we hear burn it down. And I'm like, oh, OK, we're doing this now. 
Okay. <laughs> and then there's the stare down with, with, you know, our anime villain, Seth Rollins <laughs> versus the tribal chief. And I'm thinking, okay, this is where this is going. And then at the last minute, nope, this is not where it's going. When he jumps, you know, he goes around reigns, gives his maniacal laugh, goes around reigns and just destroys, destroys Cesaro <laughs> and continues to work on that arm that had been worked an entire match. And just to drive that point home, and, you know, Seth freaking Rollins. <laughs> well, the, the the reason I liked the swerve at the end is because there really wasn't a lot of swerves during the con the, the pay per view mm -hmm. in general. Right. Uh, as good as it was, uh, most of the match outcomes were fairly predictable. And I also thought that the Usos and and Roman storyline would be the predictable end of this pay per view. Yes. As I watched Cesaro put on the match of his life uh, in this big main event spot. I almost felt bad that knowing that Roman was obviously going to win that, oh man, I hope this isn't the end uh, for Cesaro as far as like, and now you get to drift back down into right. uh, wrestling on main event or occasionally, you know, in a tag somewhere and just be forgotten about the fact that they're, they're reheating his WrestleMania feud with uh, Seth Rollins pretty much guarantees that Cesaro has finally, after all these years, impressed the right people backstage to to understand why the wrestling community sees him as a big deal. He's going to be in and around that main event at least for another pay per view. Yeah, yeah, and I and I like that. And you know, Paul brings up a good point here about you know Valor returning to the main roster. I don't think so, though. I don't. I don't. I see. I see. Balor is an NXT guy now. <laughs> Well, that's actually a topic, David, that we're going to take up on, on a special edition at some point. I have it on our list of topics I want to get around to is uh, it used to be it's who graduates from NXT and who makes it to the main roster. But now where you actually have guys going back to NXT or guys who seem like they want to stay at NXT, uh, Doug and I are going to have a conversation at, at a certain point in time. We want people to join in on too. Uh, if you have a strong opinion as to who's NXT for life. Like some of these guys now I'm starting to think that, huh? For life. <laughs> yeah. If not now, I mean, there, you know, Adam Cole is one who's been rumored for more than a year. Like, okay, they're breaking up the undisputed era and he's moving on to the main roster. Right. And, well, the undisputed era has been broken up, and things have happened, and and feuds have been settled, and yet they are still there. I think there's some guys that are NXT for life, and I'm I'm not sure that Finn Balor uh, wouldn't get lost as he ended up doing it uh, before on on Raw, um, and I think that he might be more comfortable in an NXT right now. But that's a that's a good question and, a, and a definitely a good topic for later. Honestly, until this last two or three months. I would have said Cesaro would be somebody that would have benefited from going back to NXT and being a big fish in a small right. pond working with talent. One of the best matches I ever saw in person in my life was Cesaro going back to an NXT house show to have a main event with Pac, uh, as he's now called in AEW. Uh, those two absolutely tore it down in front of, you know, 1500 people uh, on not even on television and he, Cesaro looked like he was having the time of his life because he was main eventing, putting on a long form main event style match uh, with an athletic opponent. And on TV, he was getting, if any TV at all, uh, squashed regularly. So I think that Cesaro probably has found his love for wrestling again after the last couple of months he's had. And obviously, if he's against Rollins, is at least going to have one or two more great matches mm -hmm. in prominent spots upcoming. Nakamura yeah. could definitely be one that could go back and would benefit. Yes, he's definitely one of those that has been lost in the main roster, as happens to so many. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, Ricochet too, but you know, that's <laughs> you know, that's a different show altogether. <laughs> but yeah, folks, this was uh, honestly quite a quite a pay per view, uh, all told. Uh, whether for the good, uh, like the main event and those triple threat matches, and the feel good moment of the father son tandem, uh, you know, the feel good moment really of Cesaro and the and the performance he put on in the main event, and then of course the bad was just distractingly bad, and that uh, it was terrible. Zombie, it know. was terrible. The zombies were terrible. <laughs> but I don't want to leave the card itself, Doug, without noting that this is the first time in uh, the 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 history of the Two Bros Wrestling Show. I scored a complete 100. I predicted everything correctly. Every single match I, I got right. And, and by default, you got them all wrong. Every last one of them. 
I don't know. This is more like a technical knockout, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think you just passed out. <laughs> or can you, can, you, win, can you actually win on a – this is more like a count out. <laughs> I did get them all right. You would have got many of these right too, I'm sure, had you been able to join us. But, Doug, you get next week, for those that join us, we're doing uh, programming change, folks. I know we'd announced a, a previously a, a different uh, topic for next week. Uh, we're going to put that in our back pocket and carry it over into June or July uh, because we got a string of pay-per-views and things coming up here that we want to uh, preview and review. And thank you for uh, you know sticking with us. Last week's preview show for WrestleMania Backlash got great numbers. Our preview shows do uh, uh, big numbers on both Facebook and YouTube, and that is all thanks to you guys tuning in. And we're going to have one for you next week. Doug is going to love this one. Doug, what are we talking about next week? We are talking about AEW. <laughs> you might have heard of them. It's a, it's, a, it's a small little startup out of Florida. They, they've got a tiny little pay-per-view called uh, uh, Double or Nothing coming up, and I'd like to talk about that, give the give, give those kids a little bit of exposure. So, yeah, Double or Nothing <laughs> snuck up on us. Honestly, the AEW pay-per-views come uh, more infrequently, and now that they've moved them from Saturdays to Sundays sometimes, I sometimes lose track as when they actually are. And then I saw that it's on uh, Memorial Day weekend, which also surprised me. So all that took me by uh, surprise. So that's why we had a different topic originally booked. But we're going to, again, put that in our back pocket because we think that's worth talking about at a later date. Next week, join us, 8 o'clock at a regular time, AEW Double or Nothing preview show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to watch us tonight. If you're watching this on the replay over on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We will see you next week. Stay safe, everybody. No wrestling zombies. No wrestling zombies. Absolutely not.